Hey, big sister. What's your least favorite show? That gets my gift. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. Welcome to That Gets My Goat from the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Okay, so we'll just squeeze this in here because it's timely and the other stuff we've already recorded can come later. Just so it's not as dated or... Yeah, I think it's I mean, new things will come yeah, to light we'll keep hearing and more we can stuff. probably continue to do. That gets my goats about it. But uh, this is basically about... Uh, did you see Skyfall? No, I haven't. Oh. My brother-in-law has been trying to get me to go to it, but as usual, I have no time. Was it A Thousand Lives of Men and I Have No Time? A uh, friggin' great movie, by I'd the way. I'd heard it was really good. <clears throat> of course, now I've set you up for unrealistic expectations. It's got like a 93 or something like that and Tomei Tomator. Yeah, go see uh, Skyfall if you can, if you like James Bond. And, you know, if you don't like James Bond, it doesn't feel like a James Bond movie, so <laughs> you win. But uh, we're actually, we're not here to talk about James Bond. We're ha- here to talk about something that I hold more close to my heart. In fact, I, I'd say it's the movie series Your that I hold lungs. most. My pancreas. Oh. Probably. You talk. <laughs> you were in the middle of talking. All I did was say your lungs and then you just gave up. I did. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, yeah, we're we're here to talk about a amazing development. And by now, sadly, it's kind of old news, but it's already developing into other new news. But there's an amazing development that out of the blue happened in the Star Wars universe. And it was something that I assumed would never, ever happen. I assumed George Lucas was going to keep Star Wars clenched tight in his fist until his death. And uh, when that happened, then we would at last be able to expand his universe out. The more he tightened his fists, though, the more movie franchises would slip through his fingers. There you go. Out of the blue, probably last month, two months ago now, depending on when this comes out, George Lucas up and sold Lucasfilm to Disney. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. Disney is now the proud owners of the Star Wars franchise. They paid, what was it, $4 billion? Which, if you ask me, that's a steal. They can make $4 billion back by making three movies, probably. Maybe less. Howard the Duck, part two. There you go. Uh, Yet more American Graffiti and THX 1139. There you go. All the great properties that are now within their grasp malfunctioning little twerp uh so disney has taken it over and they immediately announced that star wars episode 7 will be coming out in 2015 good luck you're gonna need it this of course sent kind of shockwaves around the uh internet i guess probably nowhere (laughs) other other places just reported on it and said yeah uh, a bunch of nerds got excited because uh, some nerd stuff changed hands it will see america was right in the middle of hurricane sandy when that stuff happened and then at some point the same assholes who said that pluto is no longer a planet said sandy is no longer a hurricane but it's okay it's pc to call it superstorm sandy and they can all die (laughs) But we'll we'll just ship them off to Pluto. Well, I think that happens with all storms eventually, though, you know. Once they have died down and they're just kind of a soft breeze, then they're no longer a hurricane. Then it's called a breeze. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But anyhow, the Sandy stuff was really what everybody was talking about. And then suddenly this thing happened in the midst of that. And I was working and I didn't have internet or anything in front of me and the people around me started talking about it at first they stopped talking about you know how many feet of water were at their summer home and then they started talking about more star wars and that and and yeah at first i didn't want to believe it because usually these things there are rumors there are false rumors that get denied and then there'll be rumors or oh hey we'll make an press announcement on monday kind of thing And then you find out, okay, yeah, we were right, what we were suspecting. But this came out of nowhere for me. Yeah, it just dropped out of the blue. You didn't hear rumblings or rumors or anything. Just out of the blue one day. And this doesn't usually happen. But the fact that I saw it on TV news first 
seemed right. It wasn't on Twitter that I saw it on first. It wasn't on, not that I keep up with Twitter, so that doesn't really mean a whole lot, but things get reported on Twitter, then they move out to blogs and et cetera, and then they eventually make it to your uh, more old school media kind of outlets. But that didn't happen. I mean, maybe it did, but I didn't see it. It just happened immediately. And uh, yeah, people just started talking about it out of the blue. Um, How does that make you feel? Star Wars is not Lucas anymore. It's Disney. I'm saved. I know that a lot of people want to find some way that this is bad. Because Disney is in like the last 15 or so years has come to be despised by many people. They think of it as the ultimate uh, corporate media entity or something like that, where they just take stuff and turn it all into Disney Channel sitcoms or I don't know what. And they've been buying up properties. They bought up Marvel not too long ago and are uh, doing what they will with that. Um, And yeah, just a lot of people want to hate Disney. They think of it as the the great Satan, the big bad uh, thing out there that's ruining all good. They talk about it like it's Fox or something. Yeah. And so there was a rumble that, oh, this is going to ruin Star Wars. Yeah, they wanted to rumble that. But the funny thing is that I haven't been able to find anybody who actually thinks that because more than people hate Disney, people hate what happened with the prequels, what has become of Star Wars. I guess you could say they hate Lucasfilm more than they hate Disney. And so seeing Disney, see, and this is the way that I felt. You know, a lot of people, oh, no, what do you what do you think? Star Wars has been bought by Disney. It's going to turn to garbage now, right? What do you think? And all I can say is, no, I don't think that. I mean, it's as bad as it can get. The only thing that could happen is it stays as bad as it can get or it gets better. One or the other. It can't get any worse. It's basically impossible. You can't sink below Jar Jar Binks. That's the last thing Misa wants. So there's no way that it can be worse. It can only be, yeah, well, I guess this isn't as good as the uh, original trilogy either. Most likely, it's going to at the very least be better than the three prequels. Whatever they make, it's going to be, wow, this didn't quite suck as bad as those did. It's not great, but doesn't suck that bad. So yay. What are you basing your prediction on? Just, I don't know, that Lucas is no longer behind it so that it can't be as bad. Lucas is not the guy pulling the strings, I would guess, is probably what I base my uh, prediction on. I don't know what, well, same yeah, thing. It, but they announced that this Michael Arndt, Arndt, A-R-N-D-T, is the screenwriter, is Uh writing, or at least he's written treatments for this new trilogy. And he's a screenwriter. What? He won an Oscar for Little Miss Sunshine, and he was one of the writers for Toy Story 3. Which was a fine film. Uh, He's the writer for the sequel to Hunger Games. Oh, okay. That's Uh, where I heard his name first. I knew it was associated with something. You know, just right there, that he's a screenwriter makes me say... All right. It's probably going to be better. Yeah. Because Lucas is a fantastic producer. He really is. He's great at technical things. Special effects is just top notch. Incomparable. But as a writer and as a director, he stumbles. I don't know. I mean, if you look at what he's done in the last decade, the Star Wars prequels, Indiana Jones 4, Red Tails, you know, they're all flawed. They, They all have problems. And it's really easy to say the problem is Lucas on that. I mean, we've talked about the prequels a lot and we'll continue to talk about it until we're old, old men. (laughs) It's our World War II. (laughs) The good thing is there's more to talk about soon, which makes me very happy. But if you were ever unfortunate enough to read his screenplay for The Star Wars from The Adventures of Luke Starkiller, you can see... That screenwriting is not his strong suit. You can see, wow, this is so hard to follow and so badly structured and written and all that stuff. And it wasn't until he hired people to write Star Wars, which, yeah, and they didn't get credit, but they did it, that it becomes what we love today. And even then, there are still some really awkward 
parts of, uh, of, of the dialogue. You can write this stuff, but you sure can't say it. And right, that's, that's something we've talked about for years. Harrison Ford said that on the set of the first Star Wars. Then it, the second one, you know, where he just hired somebody to write it and Lucas didn't even have his hands on it all that much. They would take what the screenplay was and then they'd just go with it and try and make something better, which apparently infuriated Lucas, who was still back <laughs> at ILM trying to do the special effects. But... I mean, it produced just some really awesome moments in Empire that wouldn't have existed, that didn't exist on paper, even though Lawrence Kasdan wrote this great script. And then, you know, Return of the Jedi, again, Lawrence Kasdan wrote that, but Lucas had a much more hands-on approach. And, and some of the focus of Return of the Jedi maybe isn't as strong as Empire. I mean, I, I, anybody will tell you Empire is the best one, except George Lucas. <laughs> But I, for the prequels, he did everything. I mean, he wrote every word that's in those prequels, right? Right. Except for the second one, which apparently had a screenwriter in addition to Lucas, but you'd never know it. Right. Around the survivors, a perimeter create. <laughs> this uh, match cannot be decided with our mastery of the force alone, but our, our ability of the using a lightsaber or whatever it is. I mean, holy monkey, I can't even get it out of my mouth, that, that sentence. And so the, all the problems that the prequels had, almost nobody's going to tell you that the special effects sucked right. in those movies. But almost everybody will tell you that either the story or the dialogue or the character stuff didn't work. And so to hire somebody who has written something like Little Miss Sunshine, which is just a character piece, mm -hmm. and then something like Toy Story 3 which is taking established characters and putting them in a situation that's totally new and taking them to emotional heights or depths, however you want to see it, that they've never been before. I mean, wow, that's, that's awesome. These, these are really good signs that this isn't going to be uh, Revenge of the Sith or Phantom Menace or the middle one. <laughs> so yeah, people want to hear complaining. They want to hear about Darth Vader with mouse ears. They want to hear mm -hmm, about right. the corruption, the bastardization of the Star Wars universe. But all that has already happened. I mean, how many people mocked the no of Darth Vader? I mean, that you would mock Darth Vader shows I mean, how far the mighty have fallen, you know, at the creator's own hand. And so Lucas has sort of relinquished control of his juggernaut and given it to Kathleen Kennedy, who is now CEO of Lucasfilm. Is it CEO? What is? What do you call whatever she does? I don't know. Head of Lu Lucasfilm. CEO means chief executive officer, so maybe that's what she does. And uh, I think she technically is in charge of making Star Wars Episode Seven. But, you know, there'll be a director brought on board, and maybe by the time this episode hits, we'll know who that is. But one thing that blew me away was this Michael Arndt guy, when his name was announced... They said he'd been working on it for 10 months up to that point. And so that's another thing is in secret, all of this had been going on that yeah. and nobody leaked it. I'd never even heard a single rumor about there being more Star Wars on the way or Disney, you know, getting its hands on Lucasfilm or anything like that. It's just kind of amazing. And I, at first I was really skeptical because they said summer of 2015, we're going to have another Star Wars. And I was like, you're just starting now? Oh no. And all that. But they started... A year ago, or they started in January or whatever, then hey, there may well be a director. Yeah. That we yeah. don't know they about. They just haven't announced it yet. Yeah, there's, you know, I've heard rumors that Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Leia will all be involved in this new script, which makes me wonder have they already contacted Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, and P Peter Mayhew? And Carrie Fisher. Uh, about this before the deal was ever made as well, just to see how interested they were in doing a episode seven, to see if they could get them on board to be whatever their roles may be in this. So do we understand that it takes place 30 something years after Return of the Jedi? Or is it possible that the characters of Han, Luke and Leia return, but they're still in the prime of their lives uh, that i don't know i i would assume that it would take place later i hope that it takes place later so they can actually use 
the uh, original actors for the, uh, the thing. That's what I've always kind of wanted them to do with the few, you know, if they ever were to do episode seven, is that there would be that third trilogy and we still get all our characters. But now, yeah, we're 30 years in the future and Leia is working with the government of the New Republic and Han is carousing around <laughs> like an old dude like him would probably do and luke has you know got it's a jedi academy or whatever and raising a new crew of jedis to keep the peace in the galaxy and so forth you should not have come back how integral to star wars are those three characters for you if it were announced tomorrow you know no none of those guys are coming back this takes place a hundred years after Return of the Jedi. So the only characters that we will recognize are R2 and 3PO. Like Lucas used to say years and years and years ago. Would it cease to be Star Wars for you? Would you be disappointed to the point where you're like, oh, well, I had high hopes and now I don't? No, they're not integral. What is Star Wars to you? Star Wars is just the universe, you know? As long as it's set in that universe, then, it, I, you know, they could have a story about Chewbacca and only Chewbacca and it's just a tall dude inside of a furry costume they could have a story that's just about Boba Fett I mean they do that kind of crap with the novels which I'm not a big reader of I did read a few of them back in the day but you know they'll have a whole book that's just about the various friggin aliens that were in the cantina or whatever little stories about them and all that kind of stuff it doesn't have to be a story of those it could be way in the future a hundred years in the future or whatever where Sure, we got the robots, but we don't have anyone else. And they just say, oh, yeah, and rem those great legendary figures of Luke who restarted the Jedis and whatever. That'd be fine with me, too. I, uh, You know, it's a whole universe that we can explore, and they can all be entirely new characters for all I care. I just want it to not be gone and dead like it was six months ago, three months ago. <laughs> so you are... Looking at this with, dare I say, a new hope. How <laughs> rude! No, you are looking at this in a positive way. You're I, looking forward to this. I definitely am. I'm. I. You know, it could be that it's blah. It could be that it's nothing special. It could be that I'm let down because I. Yeah, I am unfortunately already getting my hopes up a little bit for similar reasons. Yeah, we've got a great screener. George Lucas is not involved. That's going to be good. I don't know what we're going to get from it, but I still can't believe it'll be worse. And the, the one thing that I do know we're going to get from it, though, Disney has bought, they spent $4 billion on this property. Episode 7 is not going to be the last Star Wars movie we see. Episode 9 is not going to be the last Star Wars movie we see. They're going to keep making Star Wars movies probably for good. I, I guess when they throw out a Star Wars movie and it's a complete failure and they lose a whole crap load of money on it, maybe they'll start thinking, oh, maybe we better let it simmer down for a while or something. But I don't see that happening. You know, I have a baby who was just born this year. That kid is going to grow up with a new Star Wars movie every three years, probably his whole life. You know, it's the kind of thing that you and I would have just absolutely gone insane for if that had happened for us. It started out that way. Yeah, around, you know, around 79, it, Lucas changed his mind. But he in, originally intended for these suckers to come out every two or three years forever because he had created a universe. And when he took a step back, he's like, wow, you could do anything in this universe. You know, he said to Gary Kurtz, we could go back and tell stories about like young Obi-Wan if we wanted to. Or we could go forward and talk about Luke's grandchildren and things like that. I mean, we could do anything like that. And then he got divorced and then he got really depressed and then he started to lose his money and his company and his mind maybe. I don't know. And he changed his mind and said, after this one, we'll do one more and we'll be done. But that was originally the plan is that we would be in the double digits easily by now. Right. And I guess Disney sees the potential in that. And Lucas would be in the bajillion digits by now and the money that he'd have from it all if he'd only been able to just loosen his grip on it and just say, hey, you look like a capable director. You want to do another Star Wars movie? Yeah, I mean, we did these first three and yeah, why don't you do number, another one? 
You just pick a story and run with it. The backstory on the original trilogy is fascinating. Like the the different ways that it was originally going to go. Because Kasdan wasn't the first screenwriter. It was Lee Brackett was originally writing Empire Strikes Back. And that story was totally, totally different. And even while Kasdan was writing the movie as we know it, there were still plans that we're going to do a bunch more. And the fifth or sixth Star Wars movie, we'd find out who that other was. And all these things that were just going to go way, way. I mean, they were planning for the future. And I think that would be a plan for this, too. Is like, okay, hey, let, let's set the stage for 10 movies. Maybe we won't do 10 movies. But we create I can't enough. can't see them not, though. I'm just saying, we, we, we're making this movie, you and I. And, and so we're going to write a script that mentions a couple of things that we never see, that mentions characters that are out there and were lost like or something Sifo like that. Dias. Stuff like that. Well, <laughs> I guess technically that's what that is, but they made such a big deal about Sifo Diaz. I expected that to be followed up on. But you do Maybe things... that's what we can finally follow up on in episode seven. It's episode seven. Revenge of the Sifo Dias. <laughs> <laughs> the universe, the Star Wars universe is really big. And I, I haven't read those books either. I, I've read 15 years ago, I read what existed oh, then. But now there's hundreds, I'd yes, say. Yes, there are. And comic books and video games and all that stuff. And so there's so many possibilities. That you could, honestly, if, if you did it responsibly, you know, with like a $60 million budget and no, <laughs> no $20 million celebrities or what, you could make a Bounty Hunters movie where Fett and IG-88 and Bosk and whoever you like are all going after the same quarry or whatever and just, just something fun like that. And I don't know, maybe that's shooting yourself in the foot. I'm not saying that should be episode seven, but imagine the possibilities. Like you said, with a Chewbacca movie, yeah, I mean, they have episode seven, they have episode eight and episode nine, and people be like, oh, that's the third trilogy that we've been promised from back in the day. And once you fulfill that promise or whatever, you can do what, you know, it's like they've been doing for the last little while with that TV show, the Clone Wars TV show, you know, they fulfilled their one, two, and three promise, and then they set themselves up with this other thing that they can do, and they've just been doing it. And you could do the same thing. Okay, we've done seven, eight, nine, and now we're just going to do Star Wars Adventures, and it's just Star Wars colon whatever. Every movie is just that. You don't need episode numbers anymore or any of that crap. I almost wish they didn't give it this episode seven title because it kind of puts them into a box already. You you automatically think, oh, so this is going to be a continuation from after episode six, whereas you could just do anything. And so I guess maybe they can work their way through to episode nine. And then now, hey, we're out of the box. We can do whatever we want. And you could even have one of these come out every year. You don't need every third year. You could have like Harry Potter, you know, you had a this director is doing year five. Other directors doing year six, different directors doing the next one, you know, and you just have them keep coming out one after the other after the other. You could do animated films, too, in between right. the live-action films. And in there, you can have your cake, dude. You can have Han Solo and Leia and That's Luke true. look exactly the way that they're meant to because it's an animated flick. That's right, and yeah. And you can even get the actual actors to voice them so they sound exactly like they're supposed to, too. I think the possibilities are kind of endless, really, with it. And it really excites me. The one good thing about... Disney, or I guess there's lots of good things, but one of the best things about Disney owning it is this is the great Satan. I'm looking forward to completing your dream. They are out to make money. In time, you will call me master. Disney makes money. They don't just freaking mess around with crap. They're not going to pay $4 billion for a property just so that they can expand star tours at Disneyland. They're buying this to make money off of it. And so they're going to make those movies. It's going to happen. Somebody was actually saying that when the news first came out. They said, oh, wow, do you think this means that we'll finally be able to get the original trilogy un Uh, unspecial editionized 
on DVD finally. And I was like, dude, hell yes, you're going to be able to get that. If there's money to be made, Disney is going to make it. They're going to squeeze every last drop out of this thing. And they're not going to shoot themselves in the foot, most likely either. They're going to make sure that it keeps going. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll likely get stinkers in some of these films. You're going to get some that come out and hit with a thud. And others that come out and, you know, take off flying. But yeah, Disney's not going to quit when the stinker comes out. And that's kind of the cool thing that I, you know, it's for the longest time, it's just been, oh yeah, there was the original trilogy, which was really good. And then there's that prequel trilogy, which was terrible. And that was it. But now they're going to be keep coming out. Oh yeah, episode seven. I really liked that one. That one was good. Episode eight, pff, I don't know. There was some good parts, but episode nine was, oh, that one was cool. 10, well, that one was, wasn't one of my favorites. 11 though. It's the you know odd I mean? numbered Star Wars that are the good ones. <laughs> It'll just be, it, 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 I mean, it's going to wind up being like a James Bond thing where uh, episode 29, oh yeah, I liked episode 29. That one was Well, I hope sweet. they drop the word episode from yeah, the title. Too. Don't use episode seven. Just like Star Wars colon, whatever it happens to right. be. Uh, because they didn't call Skyfall James Bond 23. Right. Or James Bond 3, if you want to look at it that way, because it's, right. you know, it was a reboot. and They didn't do that with Star Wars to begin with either. I mean, it was Star Wars. The second one came out was Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. The episode number crap was just in the crawl at the start of the film. For some reason, I think it was because lucas didn't have a title for it to begin with is why they started being known by episode numbers which really irritates me when i hear my children talking like that oh yeah that was episode five and i'd be like no what was the name of the movie <laughs> see i hate when people call the original trilogy that the episodes too but i don't mind so much with the prequels because that's, that's what, what they, they were, were before yeah. they got official titles yeah it irritates me like i'll have a soundtrack playing and I'll be like what movie is this from my son be, oh that's from episode six no <laughs> what is the name of the movie the other thing that i kind of get irritated with is when people call star wars a new hope <laughs> I do too. That Although is not I, the name of it. I have done that in the past. But you kind of have to at some point because now that it's gotten so big, you like, well, what do you call it? You can't call it just Star Wars because that means the franchise as well. So sometimes you have to specify, but it does still bugs me. That's because I'm a nerd. Yeah. That gets my goat. We'll be continued next time. Ran Ryers stu- still can. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons license. Remember, the Force will be with you, always.